these days there's a wide choice of portable soldering irons and I think very few people still consider the older type gas powered soldering irons who are quite popular 10 or 15 years ago because of their portability. Now you can get USB powered soldering irons like this one for about $6. It's rated for 8 watts, it takes a 5 volt USB input and you can plug this into any power bank and you can fix a solder joint remotely. I've used this a couple of times while doing some electrical work on my car and it was very convenient to use. You can also get a more powerful, more polished uh, soldering iron like the TS100. This one is adjustable, it's regulated uh, and it normally takes a DC input from a laptop uh, power brick in the 20 volt range. But since uh, USB Type-C with power delivery is a popular thing these days, you can also power it from a power bank capable of at least uh, 12 volts by using one of these uh, trigger cables. But this will be in the $50 to $60 range and you need to purchase the uh, special power delivery trigger cable separately which uh, kind of brings this to about a $60 to $70 range soldering iron. Or if you're feeling like you want to design your own PCB to do that power delivery trigger, why not check out the sponsor of this video, jlcpcb.com, where you can order a set of 5 PCBs for $2. You can pick any solder mask color with no extra cost, and they will even offer cheap surface mount assembly if you need it. Definitely worth checking them out. However, today's video is not about these two options, I'm gonna show you something that fits in between these two. It's delivered rather unimpressively in a cheap plastic bag, but let's see what we get in here. Looks like they have included a small amount of solder wire, that's nice, every soldering iron should come with a small amount of solder. We get one of these uh, small uh, foldable sheet stands, so you won't burn something when you set the uh, soldering iron uh, on the working surface. This looks like uh, it's the body of the uh, soldering iron. This uh, is our soldering iron tip and this is the charging cable for this. So as you might have guessed, unlike previous options, this particular model incorporates a battery and judging by the size of this handle, it might be one of these uh, single lithium ion 14500 cells, or maybe two of these in parallel. Unlike the uh, simple USB soldering iron shown earlier, this one does have some form of uh, adjusting by twisting this uh, cap at the end. They've marked some voltages instead of uh, temperatures for adjustment, but I will be testing these settings to give you a reference in terms of temperature. Uh, I'll do that later on. This uses an almost uh, identical soldering iron tip uh, with the uh, USB soldering iron. It's also rated for uh, 8 watts. It should, it should have similar performance, but these two are not interchangeable due to slightly different uh, mounting style at the base. And you might think 8 watts is not enough, but unless you are working on some heavy ground planes on a PCB, trust me, this is going to work decently. The tip is nicely designed, it's a cartridge type tip, so there is a good transfer of thermal energy from the heater to the tip. To connect the charging cable, you need to remove the tip which is uh, a bit annoying. I think they uh, could have designed this uh, better to maybe have the uh, charging connection at the other end to avoid unscrewing the tip. And this was pulling about 0.5 watts when charging, so it's a fairly low charging current, uh, which is also mentioned on the charger itself. It takes a 5 volts input and it outputs 4.2 volts at uh, 420 milliamps. So the batteries are directly connected to the tip uh, and it's directly charging them. When you first turn this on, you might think you've got a faulty unit because it's uh, not responding when pushing the switch. Uh, well, that is a protection feature. You need to press it five times to enable the iron. 
and then there is an additional safety timeout of 10 seconds it doesn't matter how long you keep the switch pressed it will cut power after 10 seconds that might be annoying i would have liked a way to disable that timeout or increase it Unfortunately this turned into a bit of a fail because it stopped working. I was able to start it, use it for a few seconds enough to melt a bit of solder on the tip and then it stopped working. First I thought the battery was dead. When I press the button it uh, flashes the light which is a sign of low battery but when I plug the charger in it shows green. It's, it means it's not charging and also something strange when the tip is removed the light on the switch stays on so something is definitely going on here so I'm going to try to take it apart to see if I can figure this out but first let's check the uh, output because before when it was working depending on which setting I had right here on the potentiometer it was outputting that voltage on uh, the connection. And right now it appears to be outputting 3.3 uh, volts constantly. It, it doesn't matter which setting I have here on the bottom adjustment. It's just outputting 3.3 volts continuously. It doesn't even matter if the switch is pushed or not. So something is definitely going on inside of this. Let's try to take it apart. I managed to take it apart. It looks like we have a uh, DC to DC converter on the small PCB which is uh, coupled with a small microcontroller which turns on or off a uh, MOSFET to apply power to the heater through these uh, two wires. On the other end of the tube we have a uh, small board holding a uh, potentiometer which is controlling the output voltage of our DC to DC converter. I think what failed here is the small SOT23 MOSFET because if we look closely we can see the package shows some failure signs and I could also smell it immediately after opening the enclosure. The magic smoke definitely escaped from this one. I was wrong about the battery. It's not a lithium cell. It's a lithium polymer cell wrapped in a cylinder shape uh, that would ensure a higher capacity and discharge current. It's unmarked. But as we know, uh, these uh, pouches are not as safe as a lithium ion cell. So this might be repairable by replacing that small MOSFET. But am I going to do it? No, because I don't think it's worth the trouble. This obviously has some quality and uh, maybe design issues uh, which cause that MOSFET to fail. It certainly looked like a very interesting soldering iron in the beginning, but quickly turned into a fail when I started using it. The idea is great having a compact uh, soldering iron with built-in battery and I quite like the form factor in this metallic enclosure. Um, I like that you can get the replacement tips, uh, even different shapes and these tips are uh, actually usable unlike others. But the implementation seems to be very bad on this product. Uh, it looked to be decent quality on the outside but it failed within 30 seconds of using it. And if it would have continued to work, I would have probably hated the 10 second timeout. So I cannot recommend you getting this product. If you're looking for something cheap, you are uh, better off with the USB powered model and using it with a power bank. This one is simpler, there is less to go wrong and it's two times cheaper. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It was an unexpected result, but I'm happy it fell during my review so you guys don't have to waste your money on this. I got my particular unit from Banggood, but I would imagine units purchased from eBay or AliExpress are similar quality and would likely fail in a similar fashion sooner or later. You will find links in the description below for the items shown in this video. Also, if you want to see me test the ts 100 you can click in this area of the screen to go and watch that video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.